Thank you very much. Honorable Chair, honorable members, good afternoon. And thank you for this invitation to share my vision for my coming mandate. It's a great honor for me to be here as the fir first commissioner designate born after the fall of the Berlin Wall. It's a sign of trust in my generation, a generation with the European idea in its DNA. To me, Europe means freedom and fairness, openness and opportunity. At the same time, it means taking responsibility. The latest wave of climate strikes shows that Generation Y and Generation Z are ready to take responsibility. Being a tiny part of this young generation and a father, I am determined to take this path. For us 2050, it's not just a target on a piece of paper. We will have to live it. Now, I will turn to my mother tongue to address you in my native Lithuanian. Mano politinė karjera prasidėjo rinkimais į parlamentą gimtojoje apygardoje Vilniuje. Aš buvau Seimo nariu, ekonomikos komiteto pirmininkų, pastaruosius dviejus metus ėjau ekonomikos ir inovacijų ministro pareigas. Aš išmokau tarnauti savo šalies gyventojams. Aš suvokiau, kaip svarbu būti šalia kiekvieno iš jų, suprasti jų rūpeščius ir lūkeščius. Taip, kaip tai mokate ir jūs. Lietuva, ačiū už suteiktas galimybės ir kartu nuo įtą kelią. I learned the importance of building bridges instead of burdens. Some see a confrontation between economic growth and environment, between the digital economy and industry, between innovation and social wealth. That is not my belief. The path of challenges is a path of opportunity. It leads to a more sustainable, healthier, and more prosperous society. Our journey to green, climate-neutral planet has started. It will be hard. As a commissioner, I will do everything in my power to take us down that road. We are many on this journey. We see this from climate protests, European elections, and the Eurobarometer. 92% of Europeans want a climate-neutral EU by 2050. We need to listen. And by presenting the Green Deal as her first priority, President-elect von der Leyen has done exactly that. My greatest ambition, if confirmed, would be to make the Green Deal a reality on the ground. A deal that works for oceans, for the environment, and for our citizens, who should be front and center throughout. Honorable members, some of you were surprised to see oceans in the name of my portfolio, I understand your concern. You want an assurance that the new commissioner will have the well-being of our fishermen and women in mind? I can give you that assurance now. We live on a blue planet. Fisheries and the oceans have to remain a cornerstone of our policies. And those policies have to deal with many things. The future of our fishermen and women of course, but the environment as well. We have to deal with climate change, as we saw from the recent IPCC report. We have to deal with plastic pollution that affects the entire food chain. And we have to deal with nutrient runoffs from agriculture that cause dead zones in our seas. My portfolio brings all these things together. Healthy oceans means healthy fish stocks, and a healthy fish stocks means a thriving community of fishermen and women a healthy environment means healthy citizens with a lower burden of disease. I would strive for a joint up approach throughout my mandate in a close cooperation with you. For the environment, the president-elect has asked me to lead on three key initiatives in the European Green Deal. I will do this under the leadership of the executive vice president Franz Timmermans, whose experience and support will be vital. These areas are biodiversity, the circular economy, and zero pollution. Biodiversity is disappearing. 
the sixth mass extinction has already begun. If confirmed as Commissioner for Environment, I would represent Europe at the Convention for Biological Diversity in China next year. That conference will be a critical opportunity to turn the tide. I would like to return with three things. The first is the development of biodiversity equivalent of the Paris 1.5 degrees climate goal. Secondly, I believe that national commitments on, on ways to meet the overall objectives would help to deliver on that. Thirdly, we need a mechanism for measuring progress. Our partners are looking at us for enhanced support and more focused development cooperation in the fight against biodiversity loss. But our international credibility will also depend on the progress at home. We need to lead by example with concrete measures. This requires action on pressure points like forestry, soil, the food system, energy, and climate change. It's time to show how these problems can be solved with solutions designed for the future, not borrowed from the past. The president-elect is demanding new standards for biodiversity, wide-ranging standards from, for trade, industry, agriculture, and the economy. I am determined to deliver. But here again, honorable members, I need your help in mainstreaming biodiversity across EU and national policies. My second priority would be the circular economy. I want to raise the profile of circularity. I want to make sure it is not only a word, but also an action. If we ensure the circular use of just four materials, steel, aluminum, cement, and plastic, we cut their industrial emissions in half. Going circular makes sense. I believe the action plan could involve three major strands. It could start with the look, the way we produce and consume goods, with action on eco-design and focus on reuse and repair. It could also take the circularity to new sectors, like textiles, construction, food, and ICT. The second strand is helping consumers to make informed choices. When they see a product claiming to be green, they need to believe it. And thirdly, we need to move beyond recycling. We don't just want to minimize waste, we want to prevent it completely, wherever we can, in textiles, in construction, and many other areas. My last action area is zero pollution. As a father, as a citizen, and as a European commissioner, I want to make pollution a thing of the past. I want Europe offering clean air, clean water, clean tech, and safer chemicals. Zero pollution will demand a wide-ranging approach. It will mean specific initiatives in key areas and reinforce measures to address the main sources of pollution. For chemicals, it will mean looking at hazardous substances and endocrine disruptors. For water, it will mean tackling new and harmful pollution sources like nutrients, microplastics, and pharmaceuticals. And it will mean a new approach to pesticides in synergy with the work of the Commissioner for Health on the Farm to Fork, uh, farm to fork, farm to fork strategy, sorry, it's high to stimulate take up of non-chemical alternatives. Our policies have always been rooted in rigorous science. That approach must continue under the eighth environmental action program, which will help to mainstream the sustainable development goals. I turn now to my aims for oceans. The first will be full implementation of the common fisheries policy. We must strive for balance. Wherever we fish, fish sustainably, fishing profits raise. By 2022, I will evaluate the common fisheries policy to identify how address issues not sufficiently covered in the current policy. Because we need policy that works for our fishermen and women, our coastal communities, and our environment. It must also deal with many differences. What works in the North Sea may not apply in the Mediterranean. Every sea basin is unique, and we must to take that into account. Our efforts for sustainable fisheries and healthy, productive oceans must not stop at our borders. The EU is a global leader in ocean governance. I would use that leadership to enforce our sustainability principles worldwide, to make sure that we can deliver on sustainable development goal for life below water. I will work with the Trade Commissioner-designate Phil Hogan to reach a global agreement on ban 
harmful fisheries subsidies. I will push for more marine protected areas and for more effective management in our waters. On the high seas and pristine areas, like the Antarctic, we need new rules for the conservation and sustainable use of biodiversity on the high seas. And I will continue our fight against illegal, unregulated and unreported fishing. This problem threatens responsible fishermen and women, in particular those working on a sm small scale who suffer from unfair competition and depleted resources. Fishing is a noble profession. Every day our fishermen and women do hard and risky work to supply us with the highest quality protein. We must stand by their side. The well-being of our coastal communities is at risk. Our policy against illegal, unreported and unregulated fishing is considered to be the best in the world. But these rules are useless without effective implementation. I want to work with you to make sure that our fisheries control system is fit for purpose and ensures a level playing field. I will address shortcomings wherever I find them. Third, I want to invest in potential of sustainable seafood to deliver farm to fork strategy on sustainable food. European seafood plays a major role in our diet. Our fishing, fishing fleets lands over 5 million tons and aquaculture brings 1.4 million tons on the market. I will also lead to develop a new approach for a sustainable blue economy. This should bring together everything from marine knowledge and research to maritime spatial planning. Marine renewable energy, blue investment and regional maritime cooperation. 3.5 million people work in the blue economy. To some of you, that may sound a small number. For me, it's more than the number of inhabitants in my home country. As the president-elect reminded us, legislation is only good as, it, as its implementation. I would work closely with the, members, with the member states to improve that implementation in all policy areas. Using every tool at my disposal, that includes dialogue, the environment implementation review, infringement proceedings, and the EU court. We need laws that work for our citizens, for environment, and for oceans and fisheries, and for businesses across the EU. Honorable members, we face huge challenges. Success will depend on our working together. You will see me regularly in your corridors and meeting rooms, I'll be here for bilaterals, debates, and trialogues. We need more direct exchanges. I will visit your countries, not only the capitals, but also the regions and the coastal communities as well. My thanks for invitations I have already received. As I said at the beginning, we have to be close to our citizens. You are the re legitimate representatives. I will be placing my trust in you. I would relish the opportunity to work closely with you for the next five years. Thank you very much. I now look forward to your questions and I will answer them best I can.